Hi, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to work through a breastfeeding challenge using the Situated Clinical Decision Making Framework. The five components of this framework are knowledge, cues, judgment, decisions, and evaluation. The challenge we'll be going through is flat nipples and jaundice. So starting with knowledge, we're going to look at the pathophysiology and causes. For flat nipples, they are normally congenital, but also can be caused by breastfeeding when milk ducts are damaged and become fibrous and retract. Also, scar tissue from previous surgery or infection, breast cancer, breast drooping um, because of increased maternal age, and also even pregnancy can cause flat nipples. Jaundice occurs when a baby has a high level of bilirubin in the blood. Bilirubin is a yellow substance that um, the body creates when it breaks down old red blood cells. It is normal for baby's bilirubin to be a little bit high after birth. This is because in the womb, um, the placenta is removing all the baby's bilirubin. But after birth, the baby's liver has to do this job. And it may take a while for the liver to mature fully enough to be able to do this job efficiently. Breastfeeding jaundice is seen in breastfed babies during the first week of life, and it's more likely to occur when they are nursing problems or the mom's milk is slow to come in. Typically, jaundice occurs in the second to third day of life. So how does this affect um, the effectiveness of infant feeding. With a flat nipple, the baby may not be able to pull the nipple out, and then they may not be able to latch properly because of that. If the baby is also jaundiced, they may not be waking to feed as frequently as they should, and sleepiness may also affect their ability to latch. Um, this may slow milk production for mom, as production depends on milk removal accomplished by frequent feeds of sufficient duration and an effective latch. So cues is next. Here we're going to look at typical signs and symptoms, lab and assessment data. For flat nipples, this is when uh, they don't stick out when they're stimulated by cold or touch. Because of this, it can be harder for the baby to latch. Some babies will pull the nipple out with their sucking movements, but others will need more time to learn how to latch properly. Jaundice, signs and symptoms um, involve yellowing of the whites of the eyes, yellowing of the skin on the abdomen, arms, and legs, the baby may seem listless, be hard to wake, um, they aren't gaining weight or feeding effectively, and they make high-pitched cries. Lab data includes a bilirubin level that, can, that can be measured by a blood test. As well, some hospitals use a transcutaneous bilirubinometer, which is a probe touched to the infant's skin and it estimates the bilirubin level. High readings then are confirmed by a blood test. Assessment data includes assessing the infant for jaundice, so you can do this by pressing gently on the baby's forehead or nose, and if the skin looks yellow where you've pressed, it's likely the baby has mild jaundice. Normally, the skin should just be lighter in color than it normally is. Also want to assess for signs of effective feeding for the infant and the mom. With the infant, this looks like suckling, sucking rapidly for the first few minutes and then rhythmically once the milk starts to flow. Um, the babe should have deep, strong sucks with occasional, occasional pauses, audible swallows, jaw movement to the ear with no um, dimpling in the cheek noted. The babe should become relaxed during a feed and be satisfied after, and should have urine and stool output appropriate for their age. You don't want to see that the babe is falling asleep at the breast or letting go of the breast easily. For mom, effective feeding is more that she feels the infant suckling strongly. She may leak milk from the other breast. She may feel uterine contractions during the first few days um, after or during feeds. The breast may feel softer after feed, and the nipple is elongated and round after feed, but not flattened and pinched. Um, feeding shouldn't be significantly painful for mom, and she shouldn't have any cracked, bleeding, or blistered nipples. You also just want to assess for evidence of lactogenesis and make sure that Mom is creating colostrum or milk, and you have seen it being expressed. Next is judgment. What could be happening with the mother, the baby, and the feeding relationship? So, like we said, the nipple is flat. The baby may not be able to draw it out. Then they may not be able to latch properly, not feed effectively, and then this could decrease mom's milk production. If the baby is also jaundiced, they could, this could mean they're not feeding as frequently as they should be, and also the sleepiness could affect their ability to latch. Furthermore, if the baby is sleepy because of jaundice, they may not be showing the typical feeding cues that parents are looking for when wondering how often to feed their baby. We also want to assess if the mother and babe went through any um, traumatic birth experiences that, be, that could be affecting the breastfeeding process. As well, we want to assess how much support the mother has with breastfeeding from her partner, family, or friends. Next we want to look at, is there anyone that we should consult? 
Um, in this scenario, a lactation consultant could be helpful in getting the infant to latch properly. Also, if you're suspecting jaundice and the bilirubin levels haven't been drawn, you may want to consult the physician to get those tests ordered. There are three priorities for this specific breastfeeding challenge. The first is, if the infant is able to latch, it should be fed every three hours or on demand, whichever is first. The second is that because bilirubin, level, bilirubin is eliminated through the stools, keep track of the amount of dirty diapers. Also record the number of feeds, wet diapers, and the baby's weight. Thirdly, if the infant is unable to latch, encourage regular expression of breast milk and cup or spoon feed the infant until they are able to latch. Next is decisions. For nursing, and this mostly looks at nursing support and treatment. So for nursing support, we're wanting to encourage skin-to-skin -skin contact and putting the baby on the breast immediately after birth. You want to encourage regular pumping or hand expression if the baby has difficulty latching in order to support milk production. Um, you want to use hand expression or a breast pump to help draw out the nipple before feeds. As well, avoid putting your finger, a pacifier, or an artificial nipple into the baby's mouth. It would be good for the woman to soften her areola before feeds. Um, as a hard areola can make it harder for the infant to latch. She can do this by using reverse pressure softening, and I'll show you how to do that. So this is our breast balloon, and all you would have to do for reverse pressure softening is take your fingers on either side of the areola and press inward towards the chest wall, slowly counting to 50. And that's it. Doing this will actually express some colostrum or milk, and it will make more room in the breast. Everything won't be so taut. Another thing that we can do is encourage the breast sandwich technique. Um, this is compression of the breast tissue to help fit it into the infant's mouth. So instead of the breast being round like this, we could compress it and make it in a shape that's easier to fit in the infant's mouth. Just like when we're trying to eat a large hamburger and it's too big for our mouth, so we compress it down so it fits better. So the mom uses her fingers and thumbs, and it should be well behind the areola where the baby's mouth is going to be. The mom may need to support this sandwich um, while the baby's breastfeeding until the infant learns how to do it on their own. The shape of the sandwich needs to match the position of the infant's mouth. So, if we're doing a football hold, the C hold versus the U hold, the C hold could produce the appropriate shape to match the infant's mouth. Um, but if you're using more of a cradle position, um, the longest portion of the sandwich would be running from their nose to chin, so that wouldn't really fit the infant's mouth as well. So you may want to use more of a U hold to make the breast fit the baby's mouth better. For jaundice, treatment looks more um, specific. So frequent breastfeeding will help treat the baby's jaundice as it increases the amount of stools, increasing the amount of bilirubin excreted. Also, phot phototherapy can be used, and this is where the baby is placed under a, a special blue-green light that actually changes the structure of bilirubin so that it can be excreted more easily. During the treatment, the baby wears a diaper and eye protection, and the therapy light will be overhead, as well there may be a, therapy, a light therapy blanket underneath. The baby's vital signs and temperature will be checked regularly, and the mom can take the baby out of the lights um, whenever she needs to feed. So the last is evaluation. We want to support the mother's ability to evaluate the challenge herself and the effectiveness of the interventions we've tried, but we also ourselves want to evaluate the same things. So we ask ourselves, is the infant able to latch? Are we seeing signs of effective feeding from the mother and the infant? Is the infant getting enough feeds and dirty diapers? Is the sleepiness, jaundice, and bilirubin levels decreasing in the baby? Is the mother softening her areola and using a breast pump or hand expression to pull out her nipple before feeds? And is she compressing the breast to make it easier for the infant to latch? If the infant is unable to latch, is she expressing or pumping regularly to support her milk production and feeding the baby the expressed milk with a cup or a spoon? How much support does she have? And lastly, what is her confidence level in all of this? Is there anyone else we need to involve? So, in conclusion, in a breastfeeding challenge involving flat nipples and a jaundice baby, there are many things to remember. If the infant is able to latch, it should be fed every three hours around demand, whichever is first. It's important to keep track of the amount of dirty diapers as well as the number of feeds, the amount of wet diapers, and the baby's weight. If the infant is latching, it is important to evaluate the effectiveness of this latch and feeding. And lastly, if the infant is unable to latch, the mother should express breast milk regularly and cup or spoon feed the baby until the infant is able to latch. 
Thanks for watching.